Hello, everyone. Welcome to Career Bolt. I'm Vinod. And a couple of questions from students. So let's uh, begin by jumping right in. Anu, over to you. Hi, I'm Anu. I'm working as an operation manager at Career Board. I have a question for you too. I'll start from my side. What are the tech jobs that will not exist after this decade? Tech jobs that will disappear by 2020. What are the jobs, sir? So I guess you're asking what are the tech jobs which will not exist beyond 2030. Uh, so let's yes, uh, yes, jump into it, right? So I think there are changes which happen every year. And uh, there are lots of changes in terms of sectors, in terms of jobs and so on. So 20 years back, uh, finance was where everyone wanted to be in. Nobody wanted to work in startups. Not many wanted to work in big tech. Everybody wanted to be in finance. But then by the year 2010, 2012, finance uh, started becoming less interesting. Startups be started becoming more interesting. Big tech started to pay a lot more. So the sectors change every year. But even within, for example, the tech sector, the interesting trends, and I, which I thought I'd spend a little bit of time today in terms of what jobs may not exist uh, after the next uh, eight to 10 years. So I would say uh, yes. the couple of jobs which I feel may undergo a lot of scrutiny um, in the next couple of years. And I think that's been undergoing an acceleration because of the advances in AI. And one of the jobs, the number one job I would say is uh, data analyst jobs. So typically in most companies, data analyst jobs are not very defined properly, which means that employees are given a bunch of data points and told that, okay, come up with a bunch of insights into what should the company do with these data points. And uh, it's a free for all. Uh, there's a lot of freedom to the data analyst to decide the problem, work on the problem. And if you're working in tech companies, again, it's more structured, but then it's very basic level of insights into what the company should be doing. And you need to write technical skills and business skills to come up with a good solution. So it's not just about the technology you use and what te what languages you use to look at the data points, but how you analyze data points. That's one piece of it, but it's also about what business problems are you trying to solve. So trying to understand the business from okay. where they are coming from, trying to solve their problems is very important because when you present your ideas, you're presenting not just the technical team, but you're also presenting the business team, which is sales and marketing, which is engineering. So you have to talk their language. So I would say that okay. understanding the language of business helps. But what I'm trying to say is data analyst folks, because they're the early part of their career, they don't understand the business side enough. And they just come up with pure technical insights. Okay. That is where the challenge lies because okay. a lot of those jobs, the pure technical roles, open AI, a lot of the AI platforms, AI plugins, uh, which have come up right now, are able to look at data and come up with very interesting insights. So okay. if there is someone who's going to just share basic insights without understanding or giving a business perspective those jobs are definitely under threat of being taken over by ai especially advances in artificial intelligence okay. been happening for the past year okay so i think data analyst jobs definitely there's a big question mark i would say the other jobs are maybe graphic artists again ai there's a bunch of uh, like very good websites where you can create excellent artwork um, and you can provide the right prompts and you will get very good artwork. So when it comes to graphic design, when it comes to graphic artists, I feel that there's going to be a lot more threats to these jobs and these jobs may not exist as AI becomes better. So I've read like a lot of graphic artists are beginning to use okay. AI to improve their efficiency. So uh, if their efficiency at X level, okay. they can improve the efficiency by 60% by using tools like AI into the idea generation efforts, right? When it comes to graphic design and graphic artists, I think when there's some true design work, which is happening where, where it's genuine, innovative re, um, insights, I think that's where humans can do a good job, but if it's very repetitive. If it is like graphic artists, for example, if they're trying to just uh, fill in the gaps, I think those jobs are definitely going to be at a lot of risk. The third set of jobs are content marketing jobs. Content marketing is linked to digital marketing where you're posting on social media, where you're doing the basic stuff like uh, like identifying the keywords, making sure it's search engine optimized, making sure that it's posted. Uh, there's a frequency of posting, regular postings, uh, answering comments. Most of this work is getting automated. You don't need people to get this done. So I think content marketing, there's not much need for a full-time person. You can pretty much, even today, you can replace a lot of the work with automated tools. And there are a lot of websites which offer these services. So I would say the content marketing jobs are definitely under threat of vanishing in the next, you don't even need to wait a decade, right? Maybe two years it'll be gone. Most of these jobs are going to be gone. 
So I would say that for okay. people who want to work on digital marketing, you have to improve your skill sets, right? You have to look at more of like uh, how to master the marketing process, like coming with genuine insights and business insights about what to do, how to do, creating original content. I think that's where the market is going to go towards in the future. So those are the directions if you want to be in the space of digital or content marketing. Likewise, I would say like data analyst job, there's also jobs in as an HR analyst, as a finance analyst. And these jobs are also very ambiguous in nature, which means that the business tells you, okay, there are a lot of data, do whatever you want with it, come up with insights. And I think um, you need to come up with meaningful data points and tell it in a way business can understand. So if you're just coming up with any sort of insight, I think AI can do that work, but you need genuine business insight. So many people, for example, do an MBA and then get, get a uh, job as a finance analyst or HR analyst. So those jobs are going to be safe. But if you don't understand the business perspective and if you're starting off your career with an undergrad degree and you're a, you're a technology analyst, if you're a finance analyst, HR analyst, you will struggle to come up with the right insights. And I think these jobs definitely are under threat of being taken over by AI. I would also say finally that even coding software jobs and have a lot of risk. This is probably something that nobody wants to talk about, but when I think about coding jobs, um, I know there are a lot of companies, for example, who hire people who are not really that skilled. Uh, for example, there are a bunch of Indian companies, uh, outsourcing companies who hire like tens of thousands of students every year. Many of them don't have the right skill sets. And when they're given projects, what the students do, they copy paste code from GitHub and bunch other websites, copy paste code and create their own programs. So what I'm going to say is those copy paste coders, right? Their jobs are under the highest threat of getting eliminated because you don't need a human being to copy paste code. You can do it with a machine and both are no, no different, right? A machine can get probably get it done much faster and in a more uh, error free way. So I would say those jobs are probably have the highest threat into the entry level jobs where the person is not adding too much value. I would also say that if you're looking at jobs in the US, especially software engineering jobs, I think the compensation is too high for these jobs. And I think uh, the software engineering jobs in the US is going to vanish. It will probably all go to countries like um, India. It could go to other countries um, across the world, like in Asia and so on. Um, so my prediction is that the, fu the future of software engineering probably lies in China. It probably lies in India because that's where the manpower is. And uh, one cannot give very high compensation for doing the same work. Right now, what happens is software engineers doing the same work in India and the Silicon Valley, right? Like uh, if you're working in, say, Silicon Valley, you're probably getting paid five times more than what a person in India gets paid for doing the same work. And as companies become more efficient, as they begin to focus on labor costs, this discrepancy will not persist. So my thought is that many of these huge number of jobs in software engineering, highly paid jobs in Silicon Valley are either going to move to other places in the US where the compensation is much lower, or many of them are probably going to come to places like India or China, and mainly India. So I would say if your target is to be a software engineer in the US, maybe US is not the best location. Maybe India is the right location. So I want you guys to think about it. Right? I mean, those jobs are also going to change the future. And uh, I would say that end of the day, whether you do an MBA degree or not, try to understand the language of business, understand what company companies want, and try to add value to companies. I think those are the skills which are going to be very important in the future. So as long as you have business-facing skill sets, you will, you will always have a job. But if you're only doing technical work without applying your mind, I think those jobs are definitely going to be uh, under threat of automation. And like I said, the top jobs are data analysts, um, being a graphic artist, content marketing, finance HR analysts, and uh, coding jobs in entry level coding jobs in highly paid entry level coding jobs in the US. I think those are jobs which are probably going to be impacted. Does it help, Anu? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Awesome. So, folks, if you have any comments, let me know in, um, in the section below in terms of uh, what, whatever you thought was interesting or if you had some follow up questions. And do like and subscribe to the channel if you found this channel interesting. Thanks, everyone. Bye.